Reese Witherspoon was director Robert Luketic's first choice to play the character Elle Woods. When I put the script down, the first name that came into my mind was Reese Witherspoon, and I, I don't think I ever thought of anybody else, you know, after that. It was, it was a done deal. It's been great for me because they cast so many great comedic actors in this movie, and it's really great to just sort of be quiet and listen to people just say their lines and how they interpret the lines, and from Jennifer Coolidge to Selma Blair to Jessica Caulfield to Meredith Scott Lynn, and just everybody has such an interesting way of interpreting things. And I think that it just makes my job a lot easier. Many of Reese's co-stars accepted their roles for the opportunity to work with her. The reason that I really opened the first page was Reese Witherspoon because I had seen her in Election and I'd seen her in a couple of other things and I just thought she was extraordinary. Just from the first scene that we practiced together, she was doing a, you know, an entire character. The idea of working with Reese Witherspoon was uh, very intoxicating and uh, has proved to be just wonderful. In the Legally Blonde novel by Amanda Brown, Elle attends Stanford Law School. However, Stanford did not approve of the script, so Elle had to settle for Harvard. You think she just woke up one morning and said, I think I'll go to law school today. Elle's fictional LSAT score of 179 makes her a genius. A perfect score is 180. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? Matthew Davis, who played Warner, based his character on former President George W. Bush. What? I read a, a biography on George W. Bush kind of using that as a model for Warner. Matthew also admitted he had harbored a crush on Reese since he was 15 years old. I think I was 15. And I went to see it with my cousin and I fell so madly in love with her. I thought she was just the cutest thing in the world and I had this huge crush on her. And so when I found out I, I got this movie, I was so excited. Selma Blair was not the first choice for the character Vivian. The role was first offered to Chloe Sevigny, who turned it down for a part in a French film. Salma Blair and Reese Witherspoon reunited for the first time since appearing in Cruel Intentions. Salma was happy to finally share scenes with Reese. Working with Reese in Cruel Intentions was one of the main reasons I had wanted to do Cruel Intentions, even though I would have done anything that time because it was my first real movie. Um, and, I, and I loved it, but I didn't have any scenes with Reese, and I was so sad, and we maintained a friendship from Cruel Intentions, and I'm so happy now to, I mean, that, that Reese and I get to have scenes together, and I think she's the most talented young actress. Director Robert Luketic loved working with Mooney, who played Bruiser the dog. Robert wants to marry the dog. <laughs> I think Robert thinks that Bruiser is the best actor in the movie. That's okay, I'm not jealous about that at all. I'll never work with Robert again. But it's okay, see, I'm not jealous about it. The iconic bend and snap choreography came easy to Reese, who's a former cheerleader. Big secret, I'm letting you in here. I was a cheerleader for a couple of years. Tony could tell. She saw me, she said, you were a cheerleader, weren't you? I said, don't, don't give away my secret. Legally Blonde was director Robert Luketic's first feature-length film. He directed a short film called Tiziana Buberini about a checkout girl with a mustache. It got him the job. Alana Eubach didn't finish college and relied on films and field research when preparing for the role. Doing a role like this was very challenging. I watched uh, a lot of Revenge of the Nerds uh, films and um, I watched a lot of, uh, you know, Porky's and uh, uh, what else did I see, Animal House, to uh, really get into the character and, um, you know, went to a lot of uh, those clubs downtown, you know, where the USC chicks hang out and I noticed that a lot of them had like French tips and um, stuff like this, you know, but were very educated and eloquent but used totally every now and then. Reese Witherspoon and Jessica Caulfield went to dinner with USC sorority sisters to prepare for the film. Reese and I actually went out and met with girls at USC and studied them and took them out to dinner. And one of the leaders of the sorority actually said to Reese and I in the middle of dinner, she said, well, girls, 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 calm down. I gotta say one thing. She said, we as sorority girls know that there is a fine line between partying and studying and we want to walk it. So that's their like mantra is to walk the fine line between schooling 
in this <clears throat> world of parties and glamour and clothes and makeup and gossip and night. As part of her contract, Reese got to keep her unique wardrobe after filming. I talked to Mark Platt and Robert Lachetic before we started the film about how important the clothes could be in this movie and how they could be really defining outfits. It's just the things that stand out in your mind that are so ridiculous or so over the top that you remember them for a long time. The film's popularity led to an award-winning Broadway adaptation. Tell us your favorite scene from Legally Blonde in the comments below. Hit the subscribe button now to keep up to date on all your favorite A-listers.